This is a book on statistics and probability that is intended for students who are going to be engineers. Typically, this book is used in courses called Statistics for Engineers or other similar names, at least in the US. In this video, I wanted to show you this book because I feel that many people besides the target audience of this book could benefit from this book. There's a lot of people out there who are trying to learn statistics for other reasons. Maybe you're thinking about getting a job in data science and you want to improve your statistics. This is a great book for you. This book is not perfect. Uh, it's got a major, major con, which I'll talk about later. There's something actually that's really not good about this book, but it's still worth buying and that's why I thought I would make this video. So I'll leave a link in the description if I can find it so you can check out the reviews or in case you want to buy it. Let's just open it up and go through it. And it's been a long time since I've done a review on a stats book. I have quite a few. I wanted to pick one for this video that is harder than a very, very beginner book, but like not completely insane. It's going to cover all of the basic stuff you need to know. So I'm just going to zoom in here, pan the camera in. There we go. So it starts off with an introduction to statistics, and then it goes into descriptive statistics. So basic stuff, a lot of the stuff you would see like in an intro to stats course. Very basic stuff. Oh, there's Chevy Chev's inequality, I love that. Some probability, let's turn the page. More stuff over here, random variables and expectation. And so certain examples do use calculus, and I'll show you that in a little bit. So. Um, normally the prereq for a course like this, a course which uses this book, is some calculus. You have to take quite a bit of calculus before you can do some of the examples, but you can always skip those and do all the non-calculus stuff. People who take an intro to stats course use a different type of book, like a beginner, beginner book. I like this one. I think this is more suited to people who want to learn stats for the sake of learning stats or want to learn stats for data science or something else because it shows you like why it works because you do a lot of stuff by hand you do a lot of stuff with calculus like you see the calculus involved in the probability and stuff so it's pretty cool all kinds of topics i personally never took a course uh using a book like this instead i took um several courses using books on mathematical statistics which are very, very similar to this one. So. so let's just jump ahead and let me just show you some of the calculus that arises uh, in this book. Some over here, I believe. Yeah, here we go. Check this out. So here's a solution to a problem. Okay, it's a solution to a problem. Here's, let's look at the problem first. Let's look at this example. It says the joint density function of x and y is given by, and so they give you this, this piecewise function, they're saying f of x, y is equal to 2 times e to the negative x times e to the negative 2y uh, when x and y are between 0 and infinity, and it's 0 otherwise. And they have you compute some probabilities. You see the probabilities are asking you to compute a, b, and c. And so here it goes through the solution, and it computes those probabilities um, using the joint density function of x and y. So it does it all by hand, right? It does it all by hand. And so this requires knowing some calculus. So yeah, it's pretty cool stuff. So if, you've, if you didn't know that calculus comes up in probability, now you know it gets, it gets pretty up there. I mean, math goes on forever. Right? It keeps going and going and going and going. Yeah, really nice. Here's some more, here's some more calculus. Take a look at the section on hypothesis testing. So hypothesis testing is something that um, you would do as a data scientist, right? So um, this chapter eight would talk about that. And, you know, one of the things about stats, and I, I don't want to like sound bad or anything when I say this, is that a lot of people, um, I don't, I don't want do it wrong. I'll just come out and say it, do it wrong. You know, they explain things incorrectly. The hard part about stats is applying it correctly and applying and understanding you know what a hypothesis test is understanding everything um, carefully and being able to explain it to someone who doesn't know stats and i think that's really what it's about so here it goes through a lot of the mathematics 
that you wouldn't see perhaps in an intro course. You know, intro courses, they use software to do a lot of these things. This book um, doesn't do that. It does it by hand. It does come with a CD, actually. And I believe the CD has software. I have not looked at the CD. I, my copy actually has the CD, which is kind of funny. But yeah. Yeah. And another thing that I've noticed too is that, and this is just personal experience, you know, when I was a math major as an undergrad, um, a lot of people don't like statistics. You know, I, I remember most of my friends hating stats. Um, I didn't like it when I was a student. I struggled with it because it's very different from mathematics, right? It is mathematics, but it's, it's different. Um, it's just, it's like a whole different field, you could say, right? Here it talks about regression. So if you were to take an intro to stats class, you would learn like basic linear regression. Regression is also something people use uh, in the real world. So for predictions, you can, you, can, you can take a bunch of data points and you can create a model using that data. And then like you can, you know, use that to make a prediction about some unknown value. Software does it and you can also do it by hand. And so that's what this is about. Yeah, here we go. Least squares estimators of the regression parameters. Let's see if we can see a picture. See if there's a nice graph. Here we go. Here's a graph. So here's the regression line. Okay. And these are the data points. You see those there. And so basically what you could do here is as long as like, you know, your data you know, roughly fits the model, you might say, okay, what's going to happen um, when the X value here, this is the X axis is 57. So you just take the 57 and you basically you plug it into the equation of the line and that predicts the y values. So this is just a very simple regression model, but that's the idea, right? You have some data, you create this model using some math, and then you can find other y values by just, you know, plugging in numbers into the line. That's just a simplistic way of doing it, but that's that's one way to do it. There's other ways. There's certainly more complicated models than this, but that's a simple example of what's called the regression line or the least squares line, people call it. And so if, if, if the data, by the way, if, so you might be wondering what happens if the data does not fit, you know, the pattern or like what happens if, you know, if, it, if it's not good enough, then in that case, um, you can estimate it using other methods, right? So there's other ways of doing estimates because not all data is going to fit your model. But yeah, pretty cool book. Um, I just wanted to make a video on a stats book because it's been a long time. It's been a long time. This is really cool. This is a really cool book really fun and it's well written if you look at the credentials of the person who wrote it by the way this guy's like a rock star it's a professor at berkeley i believe i believe sheldon ross uh works at berkeley i'm not sure if he's still alive i don't know that much about him but um yeah department of industrial engineering and operations research University of California, Berkeley. Berkeley is a ridiculously good school. I just got to give this book a whiff. I'm sorry. I can smell it and it's just driving me nuts. I have to take it out of the scene. Oh, it smells so good. So nice. So, so nice. Beautiful. So many uh, examples. Oh, oh, so what's the bad part about this book? So the bad part about this book is that there are no solutions to any of the exercises. None. I don't see any in the book. There are tons of exercises, tons, and there's really good examples. And the examples in this book are priceless. I mean, this stuff is hard to learn. So if you get an example that you can understand, you should rejoice. But there's no solutions to uh, the exercises, there's no answers at all. But there's tons of exercises. But without the answers, it's kind of like, ah, I, I like being able to check my answers. I think most people would agree. So sum it up. I think it's worth getting. It's not perfect. It's not a perfect book. It's missing solutions. Certain explanations are going to be harder to understand, right? It is a math book, so, but it's a solid book that teaches you everything. Um, if you're trying to learn stats, though, I, I, I don't want to say just get this book. I would recommend this book and then maybe get some of those, like, um, like those beginner, really, really beginner, beginner stats books, like the one by Triola is a good example or by Weiss. I'll try to leave links in the description to those because those will have what's in here but it'll be at a higher level, they'll use software, and they'll spend more time trying to explain the concepts, or they'll give a different explanation of the concept that is not given in this book. So, right, the, the book by Triola might explain hypothesis testing a slightly better way or a different way than this one. So it'll give you a different intuitive understanding because you also want to understand the intuition. It's not just about coming up with the formulas and knowing how to use the formulas. The software does that. It's about understanding what you're doing and then applying it in a meaningful way to do something meaningful. And that's really 
the, the glory of statistics, right? Is you're taking something, some problem you're trying to solve, whatever it may be, and you're using math to, to try to solve that problem. My view is if you can get a better answer using stats than you would by guessing, you've done something. And that that's a pretty weak view, but it says something. It says that it's valuable, right? Statistics has a value because it, it gives you something better than you know not having it. So anyways, just rambling away about stats. It's a cool subject. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you like this video, let me know in the comments. Until next time, good luck and take care.